You reach a billion or more people around the world yes. with your various products, and we put up the, the names of all of them there. Uh, you get a lot of data. Uh, what are your responsibilities about how you handle those data? You know, we're at an important point, I think, in, in the world today where half the world's online, half the world's about to come. There's another three billion people coming online. Most of them are going to come through uh, mobile. So I think the, you know, the issues you're seeing today, are, I think, are a natural outcome of how quickly this economy has evolved, especially the mobile economy. And look, our responsibility, GDPR, is launching this week in, in Europe. So you're seeing the formation, I think, of the future of the way data is going to get used. And, and my personal viewpoint and our company's viewpoint on it is that data is going to end up in the hands of the consumer. They're mm -hmm. going to manage it so that, for instance, the dashboard we're launching for GDPR this week allows the consumer to essentially have access and control all of their data that, they, that we use at Oath for them and really put the consumer in power. And I, I think if you go forward five years, I think you'll start to see probably a large reversal of uh, what sat on everyone else's servers the consumers will have much more control over. And I think the stuff that's happening in Europe this week with some of the reviews uh, there and the things that you've seen over the last few months are kind of the start of that, that movement. So later today, we're going to hear from Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook. He's going to testify in front of the EU Parliament. And one of the things they're going to ask him about is exactly what you just addressed, which is what are you going to do about GDPR? We're going to put up actually a slide here, sort of outlining what GDPR provides. And as you look at what the various things that it's requiring, it sounds like AOL is actually ahead of that. Is that right? Because it talks about opting in and opting out, uh, or the right to refuse to have your data used for marketing, the right to retrieve and sell your own data, things like that. Yeah. Are, are you already implementing that? Yeah, a year ago when we, GDPR came up and we started building the system, we took a giant step back and said, where is it likely the world's going to go in, in three or five years around this? And it's, it's unlikely that once GDPR happens, consumers will relinquish data back and GDPR will go away. We think it's going to go the opposite direction. So we built individual consumer dashboards. It, it really does look like a consumer service, but it's all your data. So our plan globally, from starting from last year, was to build this dashboard out so global consumers, not just in the EU, could manage their data. And I think that that's something from a competitive competitive standpoint, we want to make something that we're really interested in the future of really empowering consumers and, and it seems likely that's where the world's going to go. But if you take the power away from you and give it to consumers, how does that affect your ability uh, to charge for ads and marketing? Um, well, one is it puts more onus on us to actually deliver higher value services to the consumer. So one of the things projects we're working on right now is how do we supercharge our ad units to have more functionality for consumers. So we still, uh, consumers will still opt in because they get big value values uh, out of the data transfer that we do, but really what we want to do is have the world's best ads for consumers and most functional, and ads that really speak to them. You've probably been on the internet and seen ads follow you around. Sure. You bought something and then you go to five other sites and it follows kind you. kind of creeps me out just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, well, well that, that's not a great consumer experience, and I think what we're focused on is build great ads with consumer experiences, and two is, you know, with our partnership with Verizon, one of the things we're able to do is bring brands direct to your desktop on your phone and things like that, so we have looked at this from multiple different sides and said, look, let's lean way into the consumer, let's put consumers first, and hopefully that strategy will work out. And over time, you know, we, if we do great services, consumers will opt in their data because we're de delivering great services versus, you know, you're going around the internet and you see an ad following you around that you don't like. That That's the experience. It's probably not going to last for the next five or ten years in the internet, so why not get in front of it and change it now? So, Tim, do you get a competitive advantage out of this? Because uh, the impression is that not all companies like yours are, are, are embracing it this aggressively. And I assume that's because they're worried that some people will pull their data back and they won't be able to get the same benefit yeah. from, from the advertisers. Yeah, I think all the companies, if you look across the board, probably have different strategies around this uh, overall. Uh, again, we're we're not the largest company in the space, although we have a billion users, and we have the flexibility right now for us to really develop our models really quickly. We brought AOL and Yahoo together, so we, again, we always try to point towards the future. Where's the world going to be in three or five years? I think it's going to be harder knowing some of those other companies well. It's going to be harder for them to untangle their business models versus us, which basically we have a new set of uh, businesses that we're moving to mobile so we can start in some ways from scratch, and that's what we're building out. The, the name of the game right now, it seems, in media world is bulking up, is getting more scope and right. scale. Whether you talk about Disney buying 21st Century yeah. Fox or all of these deals, you mentioned buying Yahoo. I mean, you took AOL and put it together with Yahoo. Uh, do you have enough scope and scale in terms of the content that you're generating, or what's the next deal you need to make? Yeah, so that if you look at what we've done over the last six months, or really 10 months since we put the deal together, you've seen us announce the uh, NFL partnership, the NBA partnership in sports. You've seen us launch uh, the AOL Build Studios, which is the first live internet studio on the street in New York City. We do about 4,000 guests a year there, 
and we recently have been saying that we're going to launch super channels in sports, news, finance, and entertainment. So from our standpoint, you know, we've gone up by 5x in the amount of con video content we're doing in the last year. So I think you should expect us to see on, on mobile phones some of the best video channels that you would probably see on a cable, but direct on mobile. And we just announced two weeks ago a giant deal with Samsung to put our brands uh, directly on Samsung desktops on the S9 and all their future uh, products. So we're in, the, we're in the business of creating the digital mobile future for media as fast as we possibly can. And we've got some of the biggest, best brands to do that. And we're not tangled up in some of the cable ecosystem. So we're kind of free to run just that digital. That's why Variety, Lowell McAdam, yesterday we had the, the, the sell side analyst event at Oath yesterday that Lowell spoke at. And he said, look, our, our choice was to go digital and have an untangled future versus a tangled future. And uh, really, that's what we've been focused on for media. So the spends of like Amazon and Netflix in terms of their own content, I mean, we heard yesterday, right, the Obamas are going to start producing content yeah. for Netflix. Like that's not going to come cheap, yeah. right? Well, so, we <laughs> so how do you compete with that yeah. kind of pocket and that kind of name? Yeah, so we, uh, we compete on a real-time live basis. If you look at our sports news, finance, entertainment, we tend to be live services and real-time information. And uh, if you look at the Netflix and Amazons, they tend to be doing long-form mm -hmm. kind of entertainment program. So I would say our, our niche is if you're on your mobile phone and you want kind of instant access to information, those are the things that we're doing with our brands. And we, we, by the way, we spend a fairly significant amount of money on content. We just don't, I, I call it not going to lion's den. You know, the average big entertainment buyer probably had seven or eight buyers 10 years ago. There's 30 people buying long-form shows uh, right now that are spending lots of money on it. So we're, we're taking our brands, our high ground, and differentiating directly into you know live content and the most important kind of daily aspects. For so he's consumers. just taking our job. No, no, no. <laughs> we're so. partners. We'll do it better. We'll do it better. But I, I want to return to the build versus buy yeah. question because you're build, building a lot. Yeah. Uh, a lot of other people say they have to buy. I mean, yeah. even Discovery with scripts, yep. but certainly yep. Disney, as I said, with yep. 21st Century Fox or Comcast, whatever. Uh, there are big libraries out there that they can buy in, in mass. Yep. In order to accomplish what Verizon wants to do, because right. that is why they bought AOL right. and ultimately you bought Yahoo, yep. can you get that done without buying some big, big scope of content like a library. Yeah, I think uh, you know Lowell was really clear about this yesterday. He was uh, he said, look, we're, our, someone asked him yesterday about it. He said, our, our M&A strategy is really about uh, now operationalizing the digital investments we made and going towards 5G. And so if you if you look at t just froze today and you said, look, there's all these massive cable deals getting done. There's all these telco deals getting done. But and right in front of you, you have 5G staring you in the, in the face, which is probably going to be the largest consumer revolution for access to content and media and services. Would you look backwards and go back into this industry, or would you look forward into 5G? And so our, if you see us do any deals, which uh, there's no deals planned right now, it would be to move things further into 5G and further into access, not, not backwards. So where does 5G point you? I, mean, I understand there's no deal right now, but right. if you were going to characterize, what's 5G going to change, yep. and what, where does that yep. point you in terms of the types of deals you would want to make? Yeah, the easiest way to think about 5G is 5G takes what historically you'd probably think about on a server or a device from an operating system and puts it on the network. So you're essentially going to have a network out in the world, wireless network um, and fixed wireless, that will allow you to do services you've never seen before to consumers. So if you wanted to essentially sit at the Celtics uh, Cavaliers game last night, in the front in the front seat and have the same view that someone sitting in the front seat would do on your mobile phone with instant access to it, you'll be able to do that. If you look at the financial business, if you wanted to have uh, machine learning or ML or AI driven portfolios that would reset your entire financial picture instantaneously mm -hmm. in a portfolio, 5G will allow you to do that. Wow. So the amount of scale and throughput that you can have for content services, commerce on 5G versus non-5G is a, is a really big opportunity. And you're, uh, you'll see everyone that we normally talk about and deal with in business who creates services for consumers recreating 5G yeah. services, almost like an app store, where they're going to come out with new 5G apps. So it's really exciting. In a nutshell, you ain't seen nothing yet. It's just starting. <laughs> okay. okay.